Greetings from Mars. I'm Dr. Steve Ruff, a Mars geologist and an astronaut wannabe, as you can probably tell from my homemade suit. And this is the landing site in Jezero Crater of the Perseverance rover, which uh, landed on February 18th, several weeks ago. And what you're seeing here is the blast zone from the retro rockets of the descent stage. And as you can tell, it was a, it was a pretty dynamic event. The retro rockets on the jetpack, also known as the sky crane, scoured the surface, lifting dust in some places and depositing it in others. You can actually see this from orbit with the high-rise camera. So Perseverance has already made its mark on the Martian landscape, even if it's only temporary. Perseverance came to Jezero Crater because of its delta deposit. Billions of years ago, there was a lake here, and the river that filled it created the delta. It has sedimentary rocks that could preserve evidence of long-dead Martian microbes if Mars ever had life. That's the big question that NASA is hoping to answer with this mission. The flat top hills over there, that's the delta. That much is known for sure, but the rocks around the rover, their origin is still being debated. They could be some kind of volcanic rock like lava flows, or maybe they're sedimentary rocks produced in ancient Lake Jezero. The retro rockets from the descent stage actually helped by blowing away dust off of these slabby light tone rocks to reveal that there's darker rock underneath. So that tells us that dust may actually be obscuring whether we're seeing light or dark rocks. Some of the rocks around here have holes in them, just like this sample of basaltic lava from Hawaii. In lava, they're called vesicles, and they're made by gas bubbles. But holes alone are not proof of lava. The composition of the rocks has to be measured and Perseverance can do that. So before the geologic detective work can begin, there's gonna be a first of its kind technology demonstration. And there it is. That's a helicopter, may not look like it, but it's folded up underneath. That's the helicopter Ingenuity. And it's gonna be potentially the first powered flight on the surface of another planet. And you're seeing this view thanks to the Watson uh, camera out on the end of a seven foot long arm shooting back, taking a selfie. And so that's how you're seeing this view. And down on the ground is the debris shield that protected the Ingenuity helicopter during the descent phase of the mission. And then first the cover comes off, then multiple days worth of unfolding each day, checking to make sure the previous event worked out. And then once it's fully deployed, the rover pulled away and it's ready for flight. And there it is. That's the fully deployed Ingenuity helicopter after Perseverance is pulled away. And you're seeing this again, courtesy of the Watson camera taking a selfie of itself and the helicopter. And you can also see a bunch of tracks around here that are from when Perseverance was driving around looking for a smooth, flat, safe place for, for Ingenuity to serve as an airfield. And so it turns out it was just right by the blast zone where Perseverance landed. So this is a technology demonstration, just like it was for the original rover on the Pathfinder mission. And that rover, Sojourner, proved that you can rove on Mars, and that led to a bunch of new rovers, bigger ones like Perseverance. So if this little Ingenuity helicopter works, that could lead to bigger and more capable helicopters on Mars for future missions. So the way to make a helicopter fly in the thin Martian atmosphere, which is only less than 1% of Earth's atmosphere, is to make the helicopter small, light, and really big blades. So this thing weighs four pounds on Earth, but only about the equivalent of a pound and a half in the Mars gravity. And these blades are 
about four feet long, made out of carbon fiber over foam, foam core, so they're nice and light. And the little solar panel, that generates a few hundred watts over the course of the day that charges up a lithium ion battery so that it can fly for about 90 seconds. And there's one special feature that you can't see underneath the solar panel, and it's a little piece of fabric from the Wright Flyer, the Wright Brothers' first aircraft. A piece of fabric has now been glued to the underside of the solar panel as a tribute to the ingenuity of the Wright Brothers. This is not the first tribute carried by a Mars rover. These images are from the PanCam camera on the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. PanCam was the precursor to MassCam-Z on Perseverance. The tributes here are memorials, really, and they're mounted on the rock abrasion tool, also known as the RAT. The RATs were nearing completion at Honeybee Robotics on September 11th, 2001, less than a mile from the World Trade Center in Manhattan. The events that followed would lead the traumatized employees to produce memorials to the victims of the attacks on the Twin Towers. Among the pieces of debris from the towers, delivered by the mayor's office to the honeybees, was a piece of mangled aluminum. They reshaped it into cable shields and bonded the American flag to them. Without public fanfare, these memorials were sent to Mars. A few years later, the president of Honey Bee noted that these memorials contrast the destructive nature of the attackers with the ingenuity and hopeful attitude of Americans. So now, ingenuity carries a piece of the first aircraft to achieve powered flight on Earth and the hope of doing so on Mars. And there it is. Ingenuity is fully deployed way off in the distance now because Perseverance has backed way away, almost 60 meters, to avoid any accidental dive bombing during the course of the flight tests. So better safe than sorry, right? Uh, during the high-speed blade testing, a software glitch was discovered that's going to delay things. So there's going to have to be a software patch and upload and more testing. So it's going to take several sols before the first flight test occurs. But there's still plenty of good science that can be done with the other instruments. And I'll be following along and, and sharing my observations with you in future episodes. Mars Guy out.